Medicare Part D is your prescription drug coverage. It's offered by private carriers, and generally speaking, there are plenty of plans to choose from. So today we're going to give you some tips and tricks to pick the best Medicare Part D plan. Hi there, my name is Sarah and welcome to iHealth Brokers channel. Now if this is your first time, please make sure to take a look around because we've got plenty of videos about Medicare and health insurance in general. And if there are any videos you'd like to see, make sure to let us know in the comments below. At iHealth Brokers, we are licensed nationwide and with over 200 carriers. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to give us a call here at iHealth Brokers at 888-410-0344. There's absolutely no charge for our services. And of course, you can reach us in the comments below directly. Now today we're going to be talking specifically about Medicare Part D, but we do release these videos on a weekly basis, so please make sure to subscribe, that way you stay up to date. And of course, please make sure to like this video, that way we can get this information out there. All right, stay tuned. Medicare Part D is one way you can access prescription drug coverage. The other, of course, is Medicare Advantage. Remember, original Medicare and therefore Medicare supplement plans do not offer prescription drug coverage. Part D plans are federally regulated, which means there are certain guidelines and criteria that all plans must adhere to. However, Part D plans are offered by private carriers, so these carriers compete for your business by offering better benefits than what's federally mandated. So how do you choose the right plan? Now our advice, of course, is to work with a broker. A broker is a third-party liaison who works for you, not the insurance carrier. So they're your representative, not a representative of the carrier. And many brokers do so at no additional charge. We absolutely do not charge our clients. There's no charge for our services, but we do promise to make the whole process a whole lot easier. Now, of course, if you want to do the legwork on your own, then you just want to head over to medicare.gov. That's medicare.gov, which is where we'll be headed shortly. Okay, so here we are in medicare.gov. I'm just going to scroll down to where it says find plans. You have two different options here. You can log in or you can continue without logging in. So we're going to continue without logging in. We're going to select drug plan, which is part D. If you were looking for other options, of course, you'd click on one of these other options. But today's video is just about part D. And then we will put in a zip code. It's going to ask if you get any assistance. So we talk about some of these programs in other videos, but for today, we're going to click, I don't get help from any of these programs. Then it's going to ask you if you want to see your drug costs. If you take prescription drugs on a regular basis, I highly suggest that you click yes. Now, obviously you don't know if there's anything upcoming, if you need to take an antibiotic or anything like that, but if you already take prescription drugs on a regular basis, it will help you to make your decision if you can input that information. So let's click yes. And it's going to ask you, how do you normally fill your prescriptions? Retail pharmacy, so that would be a local pharmacy that you can just walk into, or mail order pharmacy, or both. For today's video, we're gonna click both. That way you can see the different prices because sometimes there are different prices. Now, of course, it's going to ask you to add your prescription drug. So I'm going to put in Lipitor cholesterol medication because that one can actually be pretty pricey. It's going to ask me if I want a generic. So I'm going to say, sure. All right, that's enough for right now. All right, let's put in two pharmacies. We will put in a CVS. Sure, this one will do. And let's put in a Walgreens. Those are two pretty prominent pharmacies. And then we'll click done. Now, of course, I'm just picking random ones. You would pick the pharmacies that you usually frequent. 
And here are the plans available. So as you'll see, there are 28 drug plans. And right now, it's sorting them by lowest drug plus premium cost. Okay, so let's break this down now. So here's our first plan available. This premium is $7.30 per month and it has the full deductible. So the deductible is set by the federal government in 2021 is $445. Now, as we scroll through some of these plans, you'll see that some of the plans waive the deductible or lower them, but you'll probably notice that those premiums are going to be significantly higher. So when you run the numbers, you need to figure out if it makes more sense for you to have a higher monthly premium and a lower deductible or no deductible or a lower monthly premium and a higher deductible, but it can only go up to $445 in 2021. You'll see over here that we put in two pharmacies. So the reason that I wanted to do that was just for this. So only one of the two pharmacies that we selected is in network. So the Walgreens is a no-go, but I could go to CVS if I were to pick this plan. Now, whether that's important to you or not really depends. Or, or is there a plethora of pharmacies available in your area? Is the Walgreens right across the street from the CVS? Is it just as easy to go there? Or is it very hard? Is it far away, the pharmacies? So that's something that you need to take into consideration. And here's some very important information for you. So this right here, the yearly drug and premium cost. So it's estimating what your total costs for the year would be. So that's taking into consideration the cost of the drug that we put in at the retail pharmacy, plus your premiums for the entire year. So with this plan, it's estimating that if you were to take that generic Lipitor on a monthly basis, and you were to fill that prescription at the CVS pharmacy, which is in-network, and you pay your monthly premium, that's 700, I'm sorry, that's $7.30, it's going to be $51.10. And you'll also notice that with this plan, it's going to be exactly the same with the mail order pharmacy. Now let's scroll down. Okay, so this plan, a little bit more expensive monthly premium, your total yearly cost, almost twice as expensive, and you still have that drug deductible. However, both pharmacies are in network. So is that something that would make a significant difference to you, enough that you're willing to pay pretty much twice as much as you would pay with that other plan? Now, as we scroll through, you're gonna see this one's pretty similar, a little bit more expensive, both pharmacies are covered. Ah, here we go. So on this plan, you're going to pay less if you utilize a mail order pharmacy. Just something to take into consideration. Some people love the convenience of the mail order pharmacies. Some people find that it's actually much more difficult. It really depends upon your personal preference. Again, here's a major difference. This is a pretty significant savings. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down, ah, here we go. So here's the first one you'll notice, this deductible is a little bit lower. That premium is much, much higher though from that first plan that we looked at. Here's a lower deductible. So why would you want a plan with a higher monthly premium. Well, if you have significant prescription drug costs, it may behoove you to pick a plan that has a higher monthly premium with that lower deductible because you're going to meet that deductible much more quickly. So when you run the numbers, if you take more prescription drugs on a regular basis, then you may want to consider a plan with a lower deductible or no deductible, even if it has a higher monthly premium. However, if your prescription drug needs are pretty limited, then you may want to consider a plan with that lower monthly premium, but a higher deductible. Another thing I want to look at over here, so let's look at the drugs and their costs. This is pretty important. So we're just going to scroll up here. Okay, so in our other videos about Medicare Part D, we talk about the different tiers of the medications. So this is once you're in that initial coverage period.
There are five tiers of medication, preferred generic, generic, preferred brand, non-preferred drug, and specialty tier. So here it indicates exactly what your copays or coinsurance would be for each of those tiers. So for this one, a preferred generic is $2, generic is $7, $35, then you pay 50%, and then you pay 28%. Now, in the coverage gap, sometimes referred to as the donut hole, you're responsible for up to 25% of the drug's cost. Now, that varies from plan to plan, but again, that federal mandate is that it cannot be more than 25%. And then in that catastrophic coverage phase, it could be 5% or a copay dictated by the plan, but no more than 370 or 920, and that again is as of 2021. So here's your drug costs for the drug that we put in. So your cost before the deductible, after the deductible, your cost during the coverage gap, and then this would be during the catastrophic coverage phase. Now, here's something interesting with this plan and something that would be helpful to note. That was for Walgreens. Now, if we look down at CVS, our costs are much less expensive at CVS. So if you were to pick this plan, it would behoove you to fill your prescriptions at CVS. You're gonna save money for this particular plan. And then of course, here's the, the mail order pharmacy. So look at that, definitely a savings there. And it'll also tell you the tier of the drug that you've input and anything else that you might need. Now, one more very important thing that I want to look at is the insulin savings program. So if you require insulin for your diabetes, then you may want to enroll in a plan specifically that participates in the insulin savings program. Why? Because then you will only have to pay up to $35 per month for a 30-day supply of insulin. So what I did is I just added that filter there. So there are 10 plans that participate in the insulin savings program. Now, obviously, if you don't take insulin to manage your diabetes, then that's not something that's going to be important to you. But if you do, then you definitely want to add that as a filter because it could really cut down on your monthly costs. Remember, there are only certain times in which you can enroll in a Part D plan. Ideally, you'll want to enroll during your initial enrollment period. Now, that's the seventh month period surrounding your 65th birthday. So the three months before you turn 65, the month of your 65th birthday, and the three months thereafter. You can, of course, also enroll during the annual enrollment period, which is October 15th to December 7th, and then coverage begins on January 1st. However, remember, if you go for a period of more than 63 days without creditable coverage, then you may be charged a late penalty, and that late penalty gets tacked onto your monthly premium forever. If you'd like our help, you can reach us here at iHealth Brokers at 888-410-0344, or you can reach us in the comments below. As I said earlier, we're licensed nationwide with over 200 carriers, and there's absolutely no charge for our services. And of course, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things Medicare, and make sure to like this video, that way we can get this information out there. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.